Hey everyone, Doug here with B&H. Today we're looking at Panasonic's brand new BS1H box camera. Much like the BGH1 before it, it's intended to be placed into either a fixed installation or as part of a more customized shooting rig, but the small weight and size of it also make it especially good for gimbal setups and tight locations such as car interiors. We're going to take a look at a few of the ways you can use the BS1H, exploring both cinematic and tethered workflows. Now if you've seen the BGH1, a lot of the basic functionality of the BS1H will be familiar. But with the S1H sensor inside, there's a whole new range of recording and processing options. The key change here is of course the full frame image size and accompanying L lens mount. That brings all of the same resolutions and frame rates from the S1H, including the 6K and 5.4K 3 to 2 full frame formats. There's also extensive streaming and output options here with support for simultaneous HDMI and SDI output, ethernet connectivity, PoE plus power support, external raw output, and even anamorphic recording. Honestly, there's so many specs that we can't possibly cover them all, so let's jump right into it with a little cinema setup, shall we? Having used the S1H, I was prepared for a very clean dynamic image on the BS1H. Basically, that means I can get away with minimal lighting. You can see in this very tight space, we're leaning on that full frame sensor, which allowed us to be relatively close to the talent. The real challenge here though, was rigging up the camera. With a BGH1 cage from Wooden Camera, we were able to easily get the BS1H outfitted. Powering in this case was supplied by the Nano One V-mount battery from FX Lion, which is a really small V-mount battery that matches the compact size of the camera. Personally, I loved using this thing. It supplied DC power over DTAP to the BS1H while also supplying power to the port keys monitor affixed to the top of the rig. I was able to get a crystal clear image over HDMI. We'll talk more though about monitoring and menu access later. So what does the image look like and what can we do with it? I absolutely love the fully open 6K mode. The resulting image is expansive in its own right, which really helps separate subjects, but it offers a great opportunity to recompose the frame for other aspect ratios as well. The video was recorded to HEVC at 200 megabits per second in 10 bit 420, which is the camera's top end internal recording format. Straight out of the camera, the camera's V-Log color provides 14 plus stops of dynamic range, and that makes all the difference for cinematic content where you might want a really stylized color grade to emphasize the color and starkness of the lighting in the scene, like I've done here. Naturally, this is fully compatible with Varicam V-Log and V-Gamut color, meaning you can mix and match the BS1H in a traditional production that utilizes Varicam color. One of the most common uses for the BS1H as with the BGH1 before it is in fixed installations and stationary angles. Now, this is an incredibly wide use case as it can be anything from a fixed wide angle camera at a concert to an ultra high quality live stream camera in either a home or corporate setting. A sort of hybrid approach could be found in a broadcast studio where the set and the camera setup rarely change and the camera can be connected directly to a studio switcher. In our case, we set the BS1H up to tackle a few different challenges all at once. If you've seen the BGH1, you'll remember the Lumix Tether app, which was used to set up and control the camera. That's the same case here. Connecting the camera is easily done through USB-C and the majority of the main functions are accessible through the software. You get a live view that even allows tap to focus. And if you do need to dig even deeper into the camera's menus, you can access the actual camera menu from within the live view. Now, the other thing I wanted to see was if we could turn the BS1H into the ultimate low light streaming camera. Placing it right on top of the desktop case here and equipped with Panasonic's brand new Lumix S 24mm f1.8 lens, I have an incredibly wide view of our studio. You can see opposite me a GH5 recording the scene closer to how it actually appears. Now I start this at ISO 1600 and change the exposure through the software in real time. First to 12,800, then to 25,600, just because I can. It's still incredibly clean and I'm recording internally to 6K. Now, while tethering works pretty much flawlessly with the Lumix Tether program, it's not the only option for monitoring. And it's true that if you want to use this in a cinematic context, you probably won't want to rely on it. 
I said before that on our little film scene, we used a Port Keys BM53 monitor. You might have noticed a USB cable connecting the monitor to the camera's remote port. Now, the functionality isn't available yet on the BS1H, but on a BGH-1, the Port Keys monitor can actually control the menu through the touchscreen, making it much easier to use the camera in a cinema rig. For our example, unfortunately, we didn't have that functionality, but we might see it added in the future. Regardless, the camera's dials still allowed us to navigate through the menus fairly easily. When you're recording externally, you can record up to 4K 60p on the HDMI port or 1080p 60 on a 3G SDI. Because you'll want clean output on the HDMI, a separate preview and menu overlays can simultaneously be output on the SDI. This functionality is actually more critical when recording raw video over HDMI. By the way, we didn't get to do it here, but the S1H is capable of both ProRes RAW and Blackmagic RAW recording depending on your recorder and desired workflow, so you don't have to worry about compatibility issues. So let's talk some hard spec here. Now, as I said before, much of the camera's recording features are directly inherited from the S1H. Key recording formats include the 6K 3-2 format we've shown here going up to 23.976 FPS, a 5.9K 16 by 9 version that shoots up to 29.97 FPS, and both 4K and Cinema 4K formats that shoot also up to 29.97 FPS. All of these formats shoot in full frame, and there's a ton of codec and frame rate flexibility in between them. But if you crop down to Super 35, you have multiple 4K options, including UHD and Cinema 4K up to 60 FPS, and even an Academy 4x3 mode that can be used for true anamorphic recording. Like the S1H, you have multiple de-squeeze options, and the camera even supports de-squeezing over SDI, USB-C, and Ethernet. Codec-wise, you have a lot to work with here. The camera records in either H.264 Long GOP, H.264 Intra, or HEVC Long GOP, and your codec choice has an impact on frame rates, color subsampling, and bitrate. Since the options are so dense, the BS1H thankfully has format filtering options in its menus, just like most of Panasonic's recent cameras. For the most part, H.264 formats can record in 10-bit 422, but only up to the 4K formats. HEVC recording opens up to the bigger 5.4, 5.9, and 6K formats, but only records in 10-bit 420 long GOP. HEVC also opens up a few native high frame rate options, including 120 FPS in 1080p and 48 FPS in the Super 35 4K modes. Lastly, when it comes to video spec, being the same sensor as the S1H, it has dual native ISO support with base ISOs of 640 and 4000, producing incredibly clean high ISO video when you need the extra exposure. So as I said with the BGH-1, the BS1H is a box. With identical dimensions of 93 by 93 by 78.8 millimeters and weighing only 585 grams, it's incredibly compact. There's tons of connectivity on the BS1H, so let's start on the right side where you'll find 3G SDI, timecode in-out, and gen lock in Recessed below that are the USB-C and HDMI connections. You'll of course notice the same quarter 20 threads on the absolute right side of intended for rigging accessories directly to the camera body. On the rear middle side, there's a battery slot that takes the same AG VBR series batteries as the BGH-1, though do note that the battery is not included with the camera. On the left side, however, there's a DC connector intended for use with the included AC adapter. You can also power the BS1H directly through the Ethernet port with a PoE Plus switch, making it ideal for streaming and network setups. Also on this side are the mic and headphone jacks. On the far left side are the dual SDXC card slots, both of which are UHS-2 and protected by a nice latched cover. There's also a remote connection for remote control of multiple pan, zoom, and tilt controllers, and three more quarter 20 threads. On the top, there are more quarter 20 threads, function and record buttons, and an exposure slash menu dial. You'll also find a hot shoe that is fully compatible with the DMW XLR1 XLR adapter. Lastly, on the very minimal front side, you'll find the lens cap, lock, and lens release buttons. Behind the lens cap, of course, is that gorgeous full-frame sensor. Do note that the red dot here is unique to our pre-production model. I gotta say, I was surprised to see the next iteration of the box camera series so soon. 
and it's more impressive that the sensor and processing of the S1H have been squeezed into this tiny form factor. In case you were wondering, the fan here, to my ears at least, sounds even quieter than the S1H, and heat dissipation was never an issue, with the camera supporting unlimited recording times. While the BS1H is certainly designed for more specialty cases, its connectivity and flexibility make it a uniquely powerful option for certain cinema applications and for any number of broadcast scenarios. If you're looking to stream with it, it's quite possibly the highest quality streaming option that supports wide networking connectivity and recording. With the same amazing image quality as the S1H, it's an impressive package overall. So that's it for the Panasonic BS1H. I'm Doug with BNH. And I'll see you next time.